Terry, wonderful to be speaking to you and to be speaking to you here because when you talk about iconic Coventry landmarks, they don't get more well, iconic. Well, this is the place. This is what, this is what most people know. Um, this is the bombed out ruins of the old cathedral um, and a man hammering. <laughs> Maybe he's rebuilding it, I don't know. It, it, it is iconic in a way and it perfectly fits what City of Culture is. A ruin and a brand new cathedral yeah. built. It's about rising and regeneration, isn't it? That's the idea, yeah. And uh, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd lived here for the first 20 years of my life and um, it, the focus was on the new cathedral coming out of the war. And I was born in the late 50s, so the war was still present, really. And people, uh, the amount of bomb sites and stuff, growing up as a kid, that it, it was all over. And then the rebuild started late 50s and went through the 60s. But the, the new cathedral was a, a really important place, really, for me. And my school was just there, and, and this is sort of my grown-up area. What are your emotions about Coventry? Well, mixed, but generally good. And I used to enjoy, um, when I lived here, the, uh, the, the Coventry humour is... I find really funny because um, people don't get it. But I think that's the same as Birmingham. Birmingham and Coventry have got this brand of humour which is a bit self-defacing but very funny. And, um, yeah. It's a very proud day for a lot of the people that live around here. In fact, the whole of the Midlands, to be honest with you, that Coventry is a city of culture this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. It's... Um, it's, it's been weird because we sort of were aware of it on the announcement and then um, when um, I, was, I was just curious to see what was going to happen I had a feeling it'd be based around the cathedral because like we were saying this is the landmark um, and when I got the chance to get involved in some way I thought it might be really good fun this was 18 months ago it is unfortunate with all the COVID thing that's happened. I mean, how has it affected you personally in terms of your work? You've been busy curating, ringing up acts and saying, can you be part of my festival? By the way, really not sure what date it's going to be yet. Well, that's, that has been the, the, the big problem. When um, lockdown was announced in March of last year, we sort of got an idea of where we were going with it all. But um, obviously then it all stopped. And for me personally... Um, everything stopped we were going to tour and as the specials and record and whatever so this came as a really i wouldn't say hobby but a, a, a really lovely pastime so you could just sit at home you didn't really need to leave and you could um well i could sort of look at bands that i really like and artists that i really like or admire or respect and then maybe invite them to to play but then it got worse. It was just, I, I don't know what you do. So we were just sort of uh, like, it was a big hope last year that things would improve and improve. Um, then they didn't improve, but now this feels a bit more optimistic. Feeling quite confident at the end of July it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, you've got to, as you just give in really, you've got to like work towards something and and everybody who's taken part have been really great and understanding that how difficult it is because um, you know we started off with different venues but then those venues go because of restrictions and so it's been on the roundabout really and um, but people have still been you know um, very keen to to take part how has it been in terms of venues the uncertainty of where you're going to do it what have you had to make use of an, an outdoor place like this is probably a safe bet this is good this is good um i'm still not sure what the capacities are because we still don't know but anything outside is you've got a better chance really and um this is a great venue we played here uh, i think two years ago and um at night when it's lit it's it's like a film set it's amazing it's amazing how important is it to you, who grew up here in Coventry, the two-tone label was here, there was a musical movement here, 
that there's going to be a major cultural festival here in your city. Really important because um, places like Coventry go unrecognised really and um, it's, it's when, when we travel, when we travel um, as a band, like um, I think three years ago, we were touring America and people connect Two Tone and Specials with Coventry and that's pretty much all they know. Um, so it's sort of an education really uh, about what Coventry is about and what it was built on really. Do you think the city almost gets more recognition culturally abroad than it does here? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, for example, um, we played in Los Angeles um, three years ago and the mayor of Los Angeles decreed that um, May, the, I think it was the 23rd, was the specials day and um, celebrating all things specials and two-tone and Coventry, which is sort of a lot more than people here have done, which is very weird. Um, because that's how far it's reached and, uh, and our messages have, have reached that far and that's around the world we, we, we found that. If you think about what your messages were then, gosh they've never been more relevant. I mean multiracial, speaking out about re the need for regeneration, forgotten industry. I mean Coventry, the Midlands was this brilliant car making place wasn't it and that that's absolutely disappeared and that's what obviously ghost town is reflecting on yeah um, yeah well when i grew up in the 70s uh, like pretty much all my family and extended family worked in the motor industry in coventry and one by one they lost their jobs and there was nothing to turn to really there was no other skills to turn to and from maybe the mid 70s onwards the, the decline was really massive and and forgotten really and um, and people just ended up unemployed and disgruntled and you know in it, then it, it turned to the early 80s where it was really ignored and so people started to uh, sort of rebel against it and as a band we could do that because we were we, you know we could get exposure with national press and news and whatever and um, so we could highlight the things that we thought of as problems do you fear for all the ghost towns that we're potentially seeing now after the pandemic year that we've had? Uh, yeah, um, I, I think um, what this last year has highlighted is the north-south divide. And I mean, I live in London now, and um, we're sort of okay down there, sort of okay. But when I've travelled north, especially in the northeast, it's it's been sort of heartbreaking because. Um, things were bad before this with industry and stuff and now it's 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 got so bad and you know I, I think it's great that this is a city of culture because maybe it'll highlight something but I think future city of culture should just be based in the north really radical forget the south they're all right it's uh yeah is anybody else singing about ghost towns of today that you know of no um apart from cover bands but um um, no, and uh, I think, you know, um, it's, it's a totally different time. I've got kids and I've seen how they interact with the world and it's through a computer. And it's very hard for them to rebel, really, unless it's online on Twitter or something. Um, but when we started, you had to really fight to get your voice heard. And that makes a big difference. And, and you do it with a passion. And you won't stop we didn't stop we wouldn't take no for an answer we wanted we we knew we were trying to highlight the problems of coventry and and growing up here um we, you know all seven members were unemployed um you know we, we witnessed so much racial hatred it was it was it was just a really bad state and um so we could highlight that and that's all we could do really but it all helps how do you feel, Terry, that here we are, 40 years on from Ghost Town, it's still it's making headlines, that anniversary. People want to talk about it. I think Ghost Town will always do that. It's uh, Over the years, um, when I've watched programmes about society, the moment I see Margaret Thatcher's face, I'm waiting for Ghost Town. And it always comes on. It was like, <laughs> please, not again. But um, 
it always comes on because it's that sort of song, really, and it will always be used as a soundtrack for that. You must be really proud of the impact it had and continues to have. It's great. It, it's, it's really brilliant. And um, it was a worthy number one record. It's, it was at the right time, in the right place, by the right people, I think. And we were just kids. And, um, yeah, very proud. So the, the, the festival that you created has got an astonishing array of global artists as well and you've really made a point of having an international flavour to it I think. Well uh, uh, the, the key thing was not to have any restrictions in in thought really and thinking um, I'm just reflecting on things that I'd like to listen to or you know people that I like and uh, like one band is uh, the Libertines which uh, I think if you're going to have a current favourite band well for the last 10 years they've been sort of my current favourite band um, because of the edge, really, and I think bands need an edge, and they've got a huge edge, really. Pete Doherty, he's a local lad. He is. He he uh, he was raised in Bedworth. I don't know for how long, but um, because I think his his family were on the move all the time because of his dad being in the service and stuff. But yeah, he's got a, an affinity to this place too. It must be an astonishing responsibility and an honour when someone says, we're having a, a, a festival over four days, you can line the whole thing up. You must have thought... That's right. great. <laughs> it's great. You, could, you know, the choices were endless, but, um, but, but then again with COVID, that, that cuts down your choice a little because of international travel and stuff. Um, but the, the bands and the artists that we've got are, are really great and um, it's very exciting. What would you like, finally, the world to think about Coventry? At the moment, as you say, internationally, they go, oh, two-tone, ghost town, the specials. What about the Coventry of today? Well, it's weird because I have lived here for <laughs> 40 years. Um, I left when I was 18 or 19. and um, But coming back, it always pulls a string because because uh, it, it, it never leaves you. It never leaves you. And I just think it's, it's, it's great that Coventry has been offered this and... Hopefully the people of Coventry will understand this and respect it and, and be active, really, because that's what, that's what it needs.